looking in uh, chapter 1, and we'll just read um, with the 19th verse, because we've already read this whole path, this 14th or 19th before, but, but with precious blood. Well, I would do it verse 8. As much as you know, you're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation or vain lifestyle. That's old King Jimmy for lifestyle or manner of life. Received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. So we've been talking about the blood of Jesus, how that we are justified or declared righteous by his blood, that the blood of Jesus made us righteous, and that, you know, um, and that we have redemption through his blood. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We were purchased by that blood. Can you see? We were purchased by that blood. Redeem means to be bought back. You know, and, and um, Peter says, uh, he purchased us, or I'm sorry, Acts says, take heed unto yourselves and unto all the flock of which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Can you say glory to God? And so, we, uh, and then last week, we kind of just stopped right about here. First John 1, 7, there is forgiveness in his blood. Amen? So let's over, look over in First John. You know, now a uh, controversial passage because of the uh, extreme, extreme aspects of the narrative of grace. And, um, you know, we don't ever confess our sins anymore. We don't ever repent because we're under grace. And that's just stupidity on steroids. So it's SOS. So you thought it meant save our ship. And now it means stupidity on steroids. So you could do a Morse code, you know. How many you ever learned Morse code when you were young? I had to learn it in Boy Scouts. So we had, you know, we learned Morse code. I don't remember it, but I, I mean, you know, you know, save our ship was a uh, three dashes, three dots, three dashes, something like that. I've forgotten. It's been so long. But uh, we, all had, we all learned Morse code in Boy Scouts. So, you know, and uh, you had to be able to write it out. You know, they usually did it with the telegraph. What's Morse code? Ask somebody what the Dewey Decimal System is now and see what you get. <laughs> they, 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 they go, what? Yeah. Hadn't been in the library, uh, a modern library, an old-fashioned library like lately, have you? No. All right. So First John chapter 1, verse 7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, sometimes in the word of faith circles, we get a little confused. Okay? Now, I'm a new creature in Christ. The old man's passed away, all things. But you know what? To me, to say I never sinned is just fallacy because that makes Christ a liar. He had to come because we were all together dead in our trespasses and sins. I'm no longer a sinner. I was a sinner. I was saved by grace. I'm now the righteousness of God in Christ. And that man did those things and is now dead and passed away. However, for me to stand up and say, no, I, I, never, was out, I never was out without Christ. The Bible clearly says that. So we start making confessions that are based on partial information or partial understanding and because we start making them people think oh yeah we, we can't you can't say that you know uh paul, paul writes it says of whom we all had our conversation in time past the children disobedient amen we were all children of disobedience in time past we all had our lifestyle there that's the beauty of the gospel but, but, but jesus came the sun arose in the fullness of time. God sent forth his son, made him a virgin, glory to God, and redeemed us by his own blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and made us unto our God a kingdom of priests. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I rejoice in the fact that I once was a sinner. I once was with lost. I once was living in sin. But I've been born again, and now I've got the life of God in me, glory to God. Amen. But I'm not going to stand there and say I never did anything wrong. All right? And nor am I going to stand up and say it don't matter what I do now. If we say, look at verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie 
and do not the truth. Oh, I'm under grace. It don't matter. Now, he says if you walk in the darkness, what's walking in darkness? Walking in sin. He didn't say you weren't, really, you weren't related to God. He says you said you had fellowship with God. Amen? See, when you're walking in darkness, you're not walking in fellowship with God. He loves you. He's there for you. But you're not walking in fellowship with God. You're, you're, you're lying. If you say, I, I'm under grace. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter how I live. I have perfect relationship with God. No, you don't. You're walking in darkness. And you're lying. Now, look at the next verse. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, amen, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ is then cleanses us from all sin. Hello? Walking in the light. When you take a truth of the Bible and then take, what, what did Jude say? They, they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Now that word lasciviousness can also be translated licentiousness. And from the Greek, it comes from a word that means wantonness. Aban you've abandoned, you're, you're abandoning constraint. Hello? And people have crept in, even in their day, and took the grace of God and turned it into wantonness. Abandoning, are you here? Constraint. And telling people it was okay. It's not okay. Now, here's the thing. If you are living in defeat, if you are struggling with sin, if you're struggling to overcome, God loves you, and if you will work, look towards him, he will help you. He will deliver you. He will bring you out. So the church should not say, don't ever tell somebody that they're wrong to do that because you make them feel bad. They already feel bad. Are you here? You're telling them not to feel bad. And keep doing what they're doing. They're going to keep feeling bad doing what they're doing. Why? Because John said, if our heart condemns us not, we have confidence toward God. Your own heart will condemn you. I don't have to condemn you. For me to say something as sin is not condemning you. It is an acknowledgement of something in people's lives that's going to hinder them and cause them to condemn their own selves before God. What's the answer? If we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, this is the beautiful thing about the gospel. Because we tell people, yet yeah, this is wrong, but. The but is God don't care. I mean, but it's not God don't care. The but is not keep doing it. It's okay. You're under grace. The but is not it doesn't matter because we know we're going to heaven no matter what. That's not the but. The but is, if you've been doing that, God, if you turn to him and confess, he's faithful and he's just to cleanse you and to forgive you. That is his grace. His grace is even when you mess up and you were told not to mess up, when you come to him, there is grace available to forgive and to cleanse and to purge you. Now, the beautiful thing is, and I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but when he purges you, he didn't just cleanse you of the activity and cleanse you of what you did. He purges the conscience. Yes, 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 yes. He removes the, con listen, he removes the condemnation from your own heart. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. That's where that condemnation is coming from. Your conscience is, purging, is, is condemning you. Are you here? And so, this, you know, but this is a work of the blood of Jesus. This is a work post born again. When the believer sins, when he confesses that sin, the blood cleanses him. But not only removes the sin, not only produces forgiveness, it purges. I said it purges. Y'all hear you going home. It, the blood comes in its power. It comes in the authority of which the Lord Jesus Christ, when he shed that blood and defeated Satan, 
went and put his own blood on the mercy seat of God. Glory to God. That blood. Hallelujah. When you come to God and say, I sin. Not just getting born again. We've already been born again, washed clean by the blood. We're justified by the blood. Now we get forgiveness and restoration by the power of the blood. Glory to God. When in the midst of, you know, having rebelled against God, having made, done things that displeased God, having things now our own heart is condemning us about. You're a fool if you tell people. And shame on you ministers if you're telling them this. You're under grace. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't be condemned. Instead of allowing, see what you're doing, you're cutting them off from the very thing that will come into their hearts and produce forgiveness, produce cleansing, and produce a purging in the arena of their conscience so they can stand with confidence before God. Amen. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus. Can you say glory? So stop lying to folks. You think you're making them feel better. That's like giving a kid, you know, a gold star who made a zero on the test so he don't feel bad about his zero. And walks out just as dumb as when he came in. Hello? You told him it's okay to be dumb. As long as you feel good, you got a star. We don't want you to feel bad. They feel bad, especially when they go somewhere and somebody says, that's 1095, and they can hand them a dollar bill and, and, and won't know why that's not enough. They can't count. Hello? They can't add two plus one without a calculator. Sat right there and watched it happen. Can't take... Minus one and one and add it together and get zero. It's not their fault. It's a system's fault that refused to make them feel bad and promoted them so they wouldn't feel bad instead of giving them the tools they need to succeed. And when you tell people and, and when, that it's okay to leave and see it because you're under grace and it doesn't matter and God don't care, you're still going to heaven, you've robbed them of the very thing that will not, telling them it's okay is not going to make them feel good. You're just going to give them something to appease and to sear their conscience with so they become hardened to the sensitivity of their spirit to the voice of God. Because now they're searing that conscience and saying that was wrong. You're robbing them of a deeper walk with God. Hello. I said, you're robbing them when you teach people that kind of stuff. Why? Because we know, he says, that the blood of Jesus will produce forgiveness if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to cleanse, uh, forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We also know that the working of the blood of Jesus goes further. Go to Hebrews. Chapter 9. My, this, now, if you want to know my favorite passage of Scripture in all the Bible, Hebrews 9. I love Hebrews 9. Glory to God. Picking up in verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not to say of this building, neither by the blood of goats and ashes of an heifer, sprinkling unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more? I'm sorry, for if the blood of bulls of go and, and of goats and ashes of a heifer. I skipped right over a verse, didn't I? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean and sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more? Amen. How much more? See, they can get covered up for a year. They go, Mark, I'm covered for a year. Woo! I'm good till next year. And then they come back next year and do it all over again. Why? Because they couldn't forget what they'd done. They knew daily, all the time, that they were standing before God 
not able to stand in his presence. He had to abide in a temple behind a veil because he could not come into his presence. And they were ever conscious of that. And they would, be sprinkled, they would get the blood, blood of bulls and goats and they would sprinkle the ashes of the heifer and it would sanctify their flesh for one year. And if they messed up uh, enough during the year, they had to go offer a turtle dove, you know, a, a wave offering or a meat offering or a, you know, a sin offering and a trespass offering, you know, just to kind of keep things on an even keel until they could get to the big one on, the, uh, you know, Passover. Hello? But the one thing they were constantly reminded of, they were sinners. Now, telling people to keep sinning and you're under grace is not, and it's okay, is not going to not realize they've sinned. How do you know? Because John tells us your conscience condemns you. So the answer is not covering it up. That's what the Old Testament was. It was an atonement. It was a covering. They were still there. They were just covered till next year when we did it all over again. And it would sanctify their flesh enough to keep judgment off of them. But how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge, listen, not just atone, not just cover, but purge your, listen to this term, conscience, from dead works to serve the living God. You see, when people don't bring it to Christ for the blood to bring forgiveness, to bring um, cleansing, they also miss out on the purging of the conscience, which liberates them from dead works to freely serve God without that condemnation without that inferiority without that being able to stand in his presence clean and holy with a purged conscience are you here I said are you here he says in Hebrews let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace when in the time of need didn't say grace comes on you. Come and get it. That's right. Come and get it. Remember that old song, Come and Get Your Love by Redbone? I said, uh, hey, hey, hey. What's, well, yeah. They were Cherokee. It was an old Cherokee group. That was a, they were the one-hit wonders. They still play that song in movies. You yeah? know? Well, come and get your grace. All right? When you've messed up, when you sin, what do you, you come where, you don't come to the throne of judgment. See, when you come to confess, you're not coming to the throne of judgment. You're not coming that God, where God's going to swat you if you enter in just a little bit wrong. You're coming to the throne of grace. What stands between you and the throne of grace? The mercy seat of God. The blood of Christ is on that mercy seat, glory to God. And when you come to him, as 1 John 1, 9 says, and you confess that you have sinned, he is just, he is faithful. Why is he just? Because the blood of Christ, that he entered in once and for all with his own blood, glory to God, and put it on that mercy seat. Hallelujah. So that when you come to the throne of grace, between you and the Father is the blood of Christ. Amen. And in that moment, in that hour, as you confess, you're forgiven. His blood cleanses the unrighteousness away from you. And that blood in that moment purges the consciousness of you, your conscience. Your conscience and purges you of the guilt and the condemnation of that sin. And now you stand before the Father free. You're not getting born again again. And we tell people that you're under grace and it doesn't matter what you do. So I don't really say that. You've said it in a way that people take it that way. And I know because I've talked to the people. 
And they've told me some of the most dingbat stuff you've ever heard in your life. And they go around trying to convince everybody, you know, you shouldn't feel condemned when you sin. It's not the Father condemning you. Because, see, the Father's sitting on the throne of grace. And between the Father's throne of grace and you is a mercy seat. So that when you do sin, he says, come. Okay? Find, obtain mercy and find grace in the time in, in, uh, to help in the time of need. What do you need help with? When you, when you sin, your heart says, I've sinned. I've displeased God. I've walked in darkness. I've what? If you, if, you, if, you, if you say you have fellowship and walk in the darkness, you lie and do not the truth. You can't. Now, some of y'all were younger. Some of y'all are probably scoundrels. You probably cheated on your girlfriend or on your boyfriend. And it's funny how the next time when you see them after you've done something like that, you don't feel so close. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know anything like that. I'm, I'm, I, I knew that I am. Now, I'm not going to ask you for the Lord to show me that video camera from your childhood up here. <laughs> but we do know that when we sin or we've done something against somebody, when they're not around, next time we're around them, there's, there's a brokenness. Who's on? Who's in? They're there. Hey, how you doing? They're all excited, and then you're over here going. You're feeling all bad. Why? Your heart condemns you. When we sin, our heart condemns us before the Father. So getting forgiven and getting cleansed is not enough. We need to let the blood purge. Not only does it wash away, produce God, God forgives you. Not only does it wash the action away, it now removes guilt associated with it. That is a working of grace through the blood of Jesus. It is not grace that it doesn't matter what you do, God still loves you, you get away with it. You're cheating people. That, that, that narrative in that extreme is robbing people of the very thing that will remove the condemnation out of their hearts. The blood of Jesus. I said the blood of Jesus. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. What do you mean walk? See, when you come to him and forget, you're walking into the light, the blood goes to work. There's a working of the blood, glory to God. Y'all hear you go? Don't run and, and try to hide and say it's okay. Don't sear your conscience with false narratives that rob you of the work of the blood of Jesus. Now, I'm not saying God's mad at you. God's not mad. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you here? God's not looking for ways to keep you from getting forgiven. He's made all kind of provision to forgive you. Even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he quickened us together and raised us up together, made us sit together with Christ in heavenly places. Amen. So he's always working to get you to that place where you can live free. So grace is not an enabler to live in the flesh and not be condemned. Grace is the power to be delivered from the power of the flesh and live in the spirit. And it is a ministry of that grace through the blood of Jesus that works when we fail, we fall short and we fail and we confess and he cleanses and he forgives and it purges. Oh, glory to God. I said, glory to God. And in that moment, as the blood of Jesus purges the conscience, there's nothing between you and the Father anymore. It was coming from your end anyway. And see, we try to get it where people don't feel bad and try to convince them they don't have to feel bad because God loves them no matter what. And so they've taken a half-truth that God loves them no matter what. 
and go come around on this side and say, and because he loves you no matter what, it doesn't matter what you do. Well, if you're going to do that, you may as well go and get universalism. Everybody's going to get saved because it doesn't matter what they do. Everybody's going, everybody's going to heaven. Which is error. Hello? No. It's singing out song. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And a lot of times we got, there was power in it. But we really didn't know what that power was there to do. There's power in the blood. Woo! What's that mean? I don't know, but there's power there. Glory. Amen. Oh, we got power. We take a hymn. There's power, power, wonder work. I mean, you just get, woo! Get excited about the blood, and I know why we're getting excited. I'll tell you why I get excited. That because even in your worst state, in your worst place, in the worst circumstances of your life, you can turn to God, and forgiveness comes out of that blood. Hallelujah. Cleansing comes out of that blood. Glory to God. And then most importantly, on top, on the back end of that, the purging of your conscience, of your separation, enmity against God is purged out of you and you stand before the Father as a child of God, an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ Jesus glory to God, raised up and made to sit with him in heavenly places glory to God, where you reign as a king in this life through Christ Jesus glory to God, you become a kingdom, a priest before your God yes. hallelujah because of the power that's in that blood they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. There is action in the working of the blood in the believer's life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And this is where we go. Once you put it under the blood, you don't bring it up anymore. God's not going to condemn you for the past. God's not coming after you for what you did six years ago, six minutes ago, or six, or six hours ago once you put it under the blood. The accuser will come. And see, this is where we took a, a part of the message that was true and brought it over to the extreme. Because once it's under the blood, thy sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. Once it's under the blood, heaven has no record. Once it's under the blood, you've been liberated from it. And your conscience has been purged of it. Satan will come back and try to bring it up. If it's not, now listen, if you ain't done anything about it, your conscience is going to keep aggravating you. It's going to keep itching. It's going to keep scratching. Hello? The conscience is going to say, it's just sitting in there. So don't forsake the working of grace through the power that's in the blood of Jesus to bring freedom and liberty to your life. Oh, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. Hallelujah. 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 Thank God for the blood. I said, thank God for the blood. It's forgiving, cleansing, and purging power. Liberates us from sin. Hallelujah. And the conscientiousness of sin. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you say amen with that to that again? Amen. Praise be to God forever. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. I thought, man, I thought I was going to go further than that today. Hallelujah. <laughs> but when we have forgiveness, when we have cleansing, when we have purging, this is our weapon of victory. This is one of our weapons of victory. They were come by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. I know this is the victory that will come to the world, even our faith, but that faith is based in something. Amen? The blood is the undergirding of the covenant. It is the undergirding. It is the power by which grace operates. Hallelujah. 
And today, you can go before the throne of grace where the blood of Jesus will forgive, will cleanse, and purge you. Pastor, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed. That's okay. Because he'll forgive, he'll cleanse, he'll purge, raises, establishes. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word this morning. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the power of God. That we walk in the light as you're in the light. Amen. Amen. And we have fellowship one with another. Glory to God. The truth is in us because we know even when we miss it. We have the, the right, the privilege to come to your throne. That throne of grace. Not a throne of judgment. A throne of grace. And receive the power working of the blood of the Lamb of God. Where the pronouncement of forgiveness is given where the work of cleansing takes place and the power of purging our very conscientiousness of sin abdicates us from the realm of condemnation in Jesus name in Jesus name we trust you've been blessed minister to it's enough to live off of right there we can go another hour. I just all you need right there. Right there. That's it. That's what you need. You can go live in victory off of that this morning. Amen. This whole week. Rest of your life. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Father, we thank you for the people. Those watching by Facebook today, we pray over them. If there be anyone that doesn't know Jesus, anybody not filled with the Holy Ghost, and people are not healed, people are not walking in the power of God, the blessings of God, may you reveal yourself to them in your fullness right now in Jesus' name. Woo them, O Holy Spirit, to come and pray with us. O God in heaven, I come before you today. I renounce my life as it has been and accept the cleansing, redemptive work of Christ as I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord. Believing in my heart that the Father has raised you from the dead, I receive salvation and am born again. In the name of Jesus. As a Christian, I repent for all sin that I've been committing. I come to the throne of grace, and I now receive mercy. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned against you. Cleanse me. I receive your forgiveness. I receive the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. And I thank you that it purges my very conscience from the dead works so I can serve you freely and openly. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We love you. Remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We look forward to seeing you again next time. And until then, may the blessings of God rest upon you. May you walk in the fullness and freedom of knowing who you are in Christ and what it means to be washed, cleansed, forgiven, and purged by the blood of Jesus. Until next time, God bless you. We love you. We'll see you soon.